So let's get our DualSense controller set up on our PC. We're gonna do it via a wired connection. And the first thing you need to do is plug it in. So you're gonna need a USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to USB-A cable to be able to connect this to your PC or device. You plug it in there. Now, what it should do is kind of install it and it'll set it up as sort of a wireless device, even though it isn't wireless. And we'll get into the wireless setup a little bit later because there's some little, little quirks there with that. But once you have it plugged in and the drivers are installed, next step you want to do is if you don't have Steam installed, go ahead and install Steam. And then you want to go and set up for the beta version of it. So the way to do that is you want to actually go into Steam here itself and you want to go to Steam. You want to go to settings and then you want to go to where it says beta participant and you want to make sure it says steam beta update. If it doesn't say that, go ahead and hit change and go from non opt out to steam beta update and hit OK. Once you've done that, Steam will restart and come back up again. And now you'll be a beta participant. This is where the PlayStation 5 DualSense controls uh, and beta are available because there is no official driver for it, but Steam does have beta support here for it. So once you have that set up, the next thing you want to do is you want to go into big picture mode, which we have here, which controller should actually automatically detect this. And once you're in on that, you should be able to actually already start using your controller to navigate around. And if you want to make some changes, you want to go to settings. You want to go to controller settings and you want to make sure that PlayStation configuration support is checked off because that will make sure that it will, the games that support it, it'll be able to configure there with it. And you want to make sure you have all your settings down here. So if you see where it says PlayStation 5 controller, if you click on that, you can actually change the preferences. And you can change the name of it, your rumble preferences if you want to. You can change the color on it if you want to as well too. So you can hit identify just to make sure the controller is identified with a little rumble. You can calibrate if there's an issue with it. You can calibrate your joysticks if you need to. We're just going to cancel on that. But you can see I can, I can already do a bunch of controls here from L1, R1, back and forth. I can hit circle to go back go back into the main menu here and kind of navigate around with the D-pad. If, if I hit the PlayStation button, it brings up the menu screen here. And if I hit controller configuration, you can actually get deeper into the controls here, as you can see, and customize this around as you want to. You'll see the DualSense controller right there, and you can change each setting to whatever you want it to be. You can browse different configurations that you have set up with different templates, kind of right here as you want to. You can uh, go back and you can create your own templates, you can export configs, but you can customize this all around as you want to, depending on the game that you're setting, game that you're using. You can add an action set, add an action layer. You can do all sorts of stuff here with it. So I have to unify the, the pad. You can do a whole bunch of things right here and customizing this out here. So Steam does a pretty good job of giving you those options. And as you can see here, I'm playing 20XX and yeah, the controller works very, very well. It's very responsive. I think platformers are really good for testing out if you're going to see any delay. There has been a delay. It's very, very responsive. Game's actually kind of fun to play and the controller is very comfortable to use. The DualSense controller has just got that nice feel to it. It's one of the best things that Sony's done with the PlayStation 5 so far. But let's say you want to use a different system. Let's say you don't want to use Steam. You want to use Epic Games or maybe a game you just bought and installed on its own or maybe something like, I don't know, maybe Xbox. Maybe you want to use the Xbox setup here. Well, I'm going to show you how you can actually use that as well too. But there's a different tool that you're going to need to use to be able to get that set up. And that tool is called DS for Windows. And that is a really cool tool that it, I'll leave the link in the description below for you to download and install. And once you have that opened up, and this has to be running in the background, it looks like there's an update available for it. We'll skip that version for now, but it will recognize that your control is plugged in. You want to make sure this is on start, not stop, because this has to be running in the background. But you know, you'll see it install another virtual Xbox 360 controller driver when you have this set up. But one thing you want to make sure, you want to go to down here in the settings, and you want to go to controller driver setup. And you want to make sure you go ahead and hit yes on this. You want to make sure that step one is done. If you're using Windows 10, which is install the, the VIGM bus driver, you're going to need that to be able to use this controller and use this setup. So make sure that's installed. Once that's installed, you should be able to just hit new profile and you can choose presets if you want to, but we're not going to do that here. But this is where you can obviously do some configuration customizations. You can do some controller readings and whatnot with it. We'll actually, uh, cancel out of this we'll start this back up again and if we go into the default profile again and i just want to show you this here when i go to controller readings it can actually sense my controller moving around 
and you can see how the access and all that stuff. And you can see all your joysticks and I can navigate around. I can use the mouse pad on top here, not the mouse pad, but the touch pad as a mouse and whatnot. So let's say I want to use Xbox Game Pass. Let's bring that up here. I click into here. I should be able to now navigate the Xbox interface. As you can see right here, let me bring that back up. Let's click within the system. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. There we go. You can see I can navigate around and move around as I want to. I can select games that I want to start up. So let's say I want to start up River City Girls. Go ahead and get that game playing, hit play. And then that'll start up and you'll see here as I'm playing the game. Once again, I'm playing an Xbox Game Pass game with my D DualSense controller. It's responsive, it works. I haven't seen any delays or anything on it. It's pretty cool. I'm not sure why you want to use DualSense with the Xbox Game Pass, but if you want to use that, you can. But this is just to show an example of what you can do with the controller right now with no official drivers out just yet. And I want to make that sort of stance there that's really important because when you try to set this up wireless, I had a lot of problems setting this up wireless over Bluetooth. It would connect, but the connection wasn't consistent. And I was going to show how that works, but I want to make sure that we get either official drivers or something better set up before I start doing that. I'll do a different video on showing how that all, all that works. But for right now, a wired connection is pretty much going to be the best option to be able to do this, especially because DualSense doesn't have the best battery life. Most likely yeah, using a USB is going to be the best option so far if you want to use this on your PC, which is pretty cool to do because this DualSense controller is awesome. There's a lot of great features with it. We showed a little bit of it in our, in our unboxing when we were playing Astro's Playroom. It's a great way to get an idea of what this controller can do and all the technology is within it. Definitely check out that video. Also, you can use this on your PS4 as well too. If you use Remote Play, you can you Remote Play from your PS5 to your PS4 and use this control as well. And we did a quick video on that as well. So you might want to check that out and all of our other PlayStation coverage and gaming coverage here on the channel. Thanks for watching.